Well, we've been busy in the South Atlantic recently, uh, Namibia, um, lots of ac activity down there. And uh, recently our, uh, our video on Guyana, Suriname, um, well, we had over 5,000 views over a weekend. So uh, really, really very, very popular. Today, we're going to take a look at another area that has been a, a real busy and a hot spot for exploration for some years now, uh, offshore Brazil. And, and it's not just the... Uh, the Santos and Campos basins, but uh, other parts as well. I hope you enjoy. So in Trove News today, we're going to take a look at Brazil and what's been happening in the first quarter 2023. So today we're going to look at a variety of topics and they're listed here. Uh, we're going to look at some discoveries. We're going to look at some appraisal drilling. We're going to look at uh, FBSOs, uh, startup of a field. Uh, we're going to look at new wells in existing fields and, uh, and other fields that uh, I've come up for um, the final investment decision. We'll look at the uh, activity that's happening in the uh, the seal basin, and here you can see the location of uh, all the all the assets that we're going to be talking about in this news update today. Now, for those who stay to the end, we've a special treat. We're going to uh, we're going to do an overview of the petroleum geology and infrastructure of offshore Brazil basins, and we're going to do it in sixty seconds. <laughs> Can't be done. Well, watch this space. So here's a map showing the uh, the offshore basins of Brazil, and uh, most of the activity has historically and even uh, now today um, is taking place in the Santos and Campos basins. Uh, Been very very prolific uh, basins for for hydrocarbons, but uh, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, Sergipe. Alagoas uh, basins here, which uh, it's actually easier to say seal basins. So we're going to go with uh, seal. We're also going to end up and, and take a quick look at the uh, the northern offshore basins. Haven't seen as much activity to date, but uh, there are plans afoot and we'll come back and talk about those. So let's get started and put Brazil in its context. Now, Brazil is looking to massively increase its, uh, its output. As, as recently as February 2023, Brazil set a, a new production record. It achieved uh, 3.26 million barrels of oil per day, but they want to target uh, that the, they want to target 6.9 million barrels of oil per day by 2031. So it's uh, effectively doubling the production, and that's uh, not accounting for some of the uh, the gas, which uh, you're seeing there uh, is the the 4.18 million barrels of oil equivalent per day, which uh, was achieved back in February 2023. It's a very, very aggressive target, and uh, there is uh, the plan is to make uh, Brazil the world's fourth largest oil producer. Very ambitious plans. Now, it's not all roses, and in the case of ExxonMobil, who've had tremendous success, as uh, this time they've had uh, 31 discoveries uh, in the Stabrook block in uh, Guyana, just around the corner, as it were, up towards the Caribbean Sea. In the case of Brazil, they haven't really been uh, quite as lucky. Now, they have uh, 28 operated blocks in country, and uh, they've just come to the end of a, a, unfortunately, unsuccessful drilling campaign in Brazil. But the word is, that uh, they're going to go away, sharpen the pencils, uh, get the geophysicists back working and, uh, and trying to figure out uh, what they've learned from, from the, the wells they've drilled and see if they can uh, come back and, and actually be successful. Now, Cutthroat One, it was a headline prospect in the Seal Basin, but uh, it was unsuccessful. It was reported as a dry hole back in May 2022. The company uh, now is going to focus on the uh, Bakalua field. There's a successful uh, exploration campaign led by uh, Equinor down there. And although startup, we understand, has been delayed from 2024 to 2025, this will in some ways compensate for the lack of success that has been uh, in exploration. Well, we, we, we wish them well. So the first asset we're going to look at is down in the uh, Santos Basin, and it's Petrobras who reported the uh, Pedunculo discovery uh, back in October of 2022. Now it's located, as you can see on the map here by this uh, this white arrow, it's located just up to the northwest of the, the sepia field where the first FBSO is, is producing. Now we understand that at Petunculo, the, uh, the oil column is, is actually one of the the longest columns that's ever been uh, recorded in Brazil. We don't have the numbers for that, but it sounds pretty exciting anyway. 
significant discovery in a water depth of around about uh, 2,200 metres. Now, a quote that comes, uh, the resources confirmed by the Pedunculo well appear to exceed pre-drill expectations and add to the potential for future development of the area. So you can see a very, very prolific area and uh, another discovery to add to the mix. Staying in the Santos Basin, we look at uh, the appraisal drilling that's been going on now. There was a discovery, the Echidna One discovery well back in 2015. Since then, the uh, the structure has been renamed the, the, the Neon Field, and it's uh, operated and 100% uh, um, equity by with uh, Karoon Energy. Now, they refer to them as control wells. I, I guess um, they're appraisal wells. Neon One sputtered end January 2023, um, confirmed oil in February of 2023. Now water depth 343 meters and TD uh, 2,382 meters. Now um, we understand that that well had a uh, Paleocene sand and had 25 meters of net oil pay within it. The secondary target, the deeper Maastrichtian target was actually dry. Neon 2 sputtered in March 2023. It confirmed the oil discovery uh, in the northern end of the field and it, uh, it had a, a much uh, higher uh, net pay interval at some 105 meters and that's a true vertical thickness uh, of, of oil column. Work's still going on but uh, the pressures that were taken there seem to show that there is uh, pressure continuity across the field so it could all be you know one major discovery. Now prior to the drilling of this back in 2018 um, the structure was assessed to have around about 55 million barrels of, of 2C, that's contingent resources. Um, now, this will be updated following the, uh, uh, the well data analysis. So we'll watch this space and, and if uh, Karoon Energy um, uh, publish anything, or even if they send us anything, we'll put an update out. Still in the uh, the Santos Basin and the pre salt Aram block, uh, Petrobras are planning to appraise the 2021 Curso discovery. This uh, block was awarded in the sixth production sharing bid round, and uh, the, the cost was uh, in the order of about a million US dollars. So uh, a large commitment here. So getting after the appraisal and, and trying to bring something forward is probably high on the agenda. Here's the the drill ship that's currently on site. It's the uh, Brava Star and it's in around about 2,000 meters water depth. Now, looking at one of the fields in the Santos Basin, again, Petrobras looking at the uh, the FPSO uh, P71, and it's essentially, it's the startup at uh, Itapu, put on production back in December 2022, ahead of schedule. P71 was originally planned for the 2P field, but Petrobras decided to relocate the FPSO. The strategic decision is that they're looking at the deep and ultra deep water. Here at Itupu, it's um, 2,010 meters water depth. The production capacity for this vessel, 150,000 barrels of oil per day and some 6 million standard cubic meters per day. The Atlanta field, again in the Santos Basin, um, some new producers, and this is an outer energy, 100% uh, in this block. They've started up a new production well in the field and it's uh, it's actually going to be tied back and produced over the FPSO, the Petriol, which uh, is well known to uh, North Sea operators. And that's going to uh, that's going to commence in March or commenced in March 2023. It's the first of three wells that's being drilled in a campaign. The two others will actually be tied back to the Atlanta FPSO. The field is currently producing around about 16,000 barrels of oil per day. Also in Santos Basin, and again staying with Karoon Energy, another 100% uh, asset. And this is the Patola field, where the second producer is on stream as of March 2023, and it's uh, come on at 12,000 barrels of oil per day. The total production rate from the license is, is now... Um, over 40,000 barrels a day, but there is some confusion in uh, some of the press releases and we aren't entirely clear what's going on there. So perhaps uh, Karoon Energy will get in touch and we'll put an update out on this one. That's the rig and there's the FPSO that's uh, on the block there. So now news of uh, Lapa Southwest. Now the uh, this is Total Energy. They've actually made the uh, the final investment decision to, uh, to invest 1 billion US dollars um, for the Lapa Southwest oil development. You know, this is sort of some 300 kilometers offshore. It's really a long way out. And it's a three-well development. It's going to be connected back to the existing Lapa FPSO. 
It's about a 12 kilometer tie back and uh, Lapa has been producing since uh, 2016. First oil expected 2025 and uh, it's going to add uh, an incremental production increase of around about 25,000 barrels of oil per day. Moving to the Campos Basin, and the news here is that Petrobras has uh, sold their 90% Albacore Leste stake or um, equity to uh, Petro Rio, and that's uh, reportedly for 1.9 billion US dollars. Now there are some contingent payments on that. The uh, the field in 2022 was producing 29,000 barrels of oil uh, as an average, and was produced via the P50 FPSO. Another uh, sale that was uh, announced in the quarter was um, Petrobras announced the sale of 62.5% uh, of the equity in the Papa Terra field to 3R Offshore. Now that's reportedly for uh, for 24.2 million US dollars, but there are contingent payments which could be up to another 80 million US dollars. In Q4 2022, the field was producing around about 16,000 barrels of oil per day, and it was produced via two vessels, the uh, the P61, which is a, a tension leg wellhead platform, and the P63, which is a an FPSO, in a water depth of around about uh, 1,200 meters. Now let's uh, move north and we'll have a look at the seal basin. And uh, here we see, well, back in December 2021, seven deep water fields uh, in the uh, seal basin were declared commercially viable. And there's a list of the fields. And in uh, April 2023, Petrobras started the contracting process for two FPSOs, uh, the SEAP1 and the SEAP2, which uh, Basically, these are the uh, the two areas that's going to be covered by that. Now, each of these F FPSOs will have about 120,000 barrels of oil um, processing capacity, and combined together, we'll have somewhere in the region of uh, 18 million cubic meters of um, gas processing capacity. Now, water depth here is 2,500 meters. As for exploration in the Campos and Santos uh, basins, um, there are two blocks uh, that recently put on offer. Uh, it's March 2023 uh, by AMP, um, who continue to evaluate the remaining potential of the pre-salt region. In the Campos, it's the Jasper exploration block now. Here, water depths uh, of the order of uh, 2,600 to 2,900 metres, um, estimated to hold or have uh, prospective resource potential of uh, two and a half billion barrels of oil equivalent. And in the Santos uh, Basin block SM1259, which is in water depths of 2,300 to 2,600 meters, prospective resources are assessed to, to be of the order of about five billion barrels of oil equivalent. I think one of the most exciting areas is the uh, the northern basins. So these are the equatorial margin basins, and, and you can see them here highlighted on the map. Petrobras are going to invest some three billion US dollars in drilling 16 wells in this region before 2027. Now, Morpho is the first well to be planned, and it's in the Foz do Amazonas basin, which uh, is just uh, awaiting uh, final environmental authorization before that spuds uh, and there's one of those uh, typical statements that are made by uh, politicians um, but the uh, there have been a few wells in the uh, in and around this region if you recall around the corner just to the northwest here you've uh, you don't have to go too far before you get into Suriname and indeed into Guyana where there's been prolific discoveries. Many of the play um, play attributes are present in these basins here, um, particularly when you kind of reconstruct and you see what was on the, uh, the conjugate margin on the West African coastline. So in summary, um, major discoveries may have slowed for Brazil, but there's still very high levels of, of activity, uh, exploration, appraisal and development. Um, the seal basin developments, uh, they, they look like uh, they're really gathering a pace now and, and really getting ready with some contracts being uh, likely to be awarded before too long. Uh, Santos and Campos basins, they're still the main development locations, but a lot of optimism for the, uh, for the northern basin and exploration in that region. Now, you'll recall that we said that we'd review the petroleum geology and infrastructure of offshore Brazil in 60 seconds. Can't be done. Or can it? 
So to understand the offshore basins, you've first of all got to understand the stratigraphy. You can see there's lots of different uh, stratigraphic columns in the region. Also, we've got to really understand that pre-salt play. And here you can see we have lots of information on that. The source rock's very, very important. And here we have lots of information on maturity, source richness, and um, timing of generation. Plate tectonic story in the regional setting, very, very important just to understand how these basins have formed and when and how they've evolved. Loads of basins. So you can see it's good to be able to compare and contrast one basin with another as you move around from, from north to south in Brazil. There is lots of seismic and associated technologies and you can see here maps showing where the uh, seismic 2D and 3D is located, um, seismic sections, um, some, some regional lines and, and, and indeed some of the technologies that are being used. In terms of infrastructure, that's the pipelines, the terminals, the refineries and the LNG plants. We've got all that information available. Reserves and production, well, the production history and uh, just where are the wells, where are, where are the reserves. Uh, we have lots of information in this and in other tables. Licenses and bidding rounds, very important. And you'll see reviews of, uh, of where the current licenses are and also where the license rounds and what recent activity has, there has been and continues to be. Maybe you just want to browse some maps and here you can see a whole range of maps um, across the region. Or perhaps look at uh, the assets and here you can look by basin, by operator, by fluid type, by asset type, by uh, geological age, or indeed by, uh, by water depth band. Um, you can look at specific fields. Here's our entry or part of it for, for Buzios. Or look at Tupi. Or maybe you want to look at Marlin. Uh, or maybe you want to look at any of these uh, fields. Uh, or you want to look at any of these discoveries. Or any of these prospects. If you do, you can find them all in, the, uh, in one place. Uh, here, additional information, some headers there. Uh, you can also find out about the companies and what they're doing in in Brazil. You can understand the uh, the oil quality versus depth. But at the end of the day, it may just be easier to simply subscribe to Trove like your competitors do. Or you can spend decades trying to catch up with all the material that we've collated and, uh, and we keep adding to it on a daily basis and keep our clients up to date with all the news, all the developments and uh, you know put all the technical information in one easy to find place in one simple app. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, Brazil is uh, an absolutely amazing place and continues to, to fascinate with uh, the number of FPSOs that are, are going to be moving towards that country and, and up and operational before too long. So, um, yeah, hopefully it's, uh, it's been of interest. And uh, we've got a lot more videos coming out in the region, um, a lot more reviews. And um, please uh, subscribe to the channel. That's the way you can support us. Um, subscribe and ring the bell and uh, hopefully we'll see you back on the channel before too long. Bye for now. Get in touch. There's the, uh, the website and the email address and uh, arrange a demonstration of, uh, of anywhere in the world you'd like to see.